Well, it's finally time to make over a duster for myself. I've had this in my inventory for about a year. I knew that this was the one that I wanted. It fit exactly the place that I wanted it to be. It's time to get it done. It does have some water damage on the top. Let's get started though by uh, removing the hardware. Well, I always remove the hardware first, just so when I get in there to do some cleaning, I can really get in all of the uh, nicks and crannies of everything without the hardware being in the way. Plus, I want to go ahead and deal with the hardware separately. I'm going to be changing out the hardware on this one. Uh, so we're just going to get into cleaning. I'm using crud cutter here. I like to use a degreaser because years and years of buildup of cleaning products and the oils on our hands, it just, um, you know, just builds up on a piece. And what I don't want to do is start sanding and smearing it all around and it all gunks up my sandpaper. So it's best to just do a degreaser first, get it really clean. There's lots of degreasers out there. I use crud cutter. Here's another look at that water stain or it almost looks like it had acetone or something in it that melted it. Now that everything's clean, I'm gonna get into sanding. I'm jumping right in with my surf prep. This has a, I have the pads on there so that I can get all of the curves and everything and not worry about having flat spots and things. So it really cuts down on my time. Uh, this is gonna take some time. This is a large dresser. And this top drawer especially has lots of details in it with the little round trim, um, all the little half rounds and, you know, sides, top, everything we're going to be doing. Every little bit of this needs to be scuff sanded. Scuff sanding is important, even though it's in fantastic condition. This dresser's, oh, and besides that little thing on the top, it's really in great condition. So why am I sanding every inch of it? Because it's shiny. It's got a high gloss finish. That shiny barathane or whatever that's on it is not something that paint sticks to. So we want to make sure and just scuff sand the entire thing. I have gone over this top with the orbital and I'm going back over it with the surf pipe just to get everything nice and smooth. You can see that water area or that area that was damaged on top is all smooth now. I thought I was going to have to go in with the carbide scraper and actually just scrape the whole thing off, but it actually smoothed out really easy with just the sanding. Uh, so I switched to just a traditional sandpaper um, on the surf prep piece. So it's totally flat. You can see I've pushed my pad to the side for this on a flat surface. Just the regular flat sandpaper. But it is, uh, I like to finish up after the orbital with it. It just smooths everything out. There's one more look. Everything is scuff sanded. There's that damaged area looking good. But now what? <laughs> it's filthy. <laughs> so it's going to be time to clean this once again. Probably going to wipe this dresser down three or four times before we're done. Uh, I also take all the drawers out. I'm sanding the uh, inside of the cabinet. The dovetails are very dark. As you can see, they're stained and um, they do have the same varnish and everything on them. They're really dark because I'm painting this white. I thought that would look really odd. To have these super dark dovetails next to the white paint. So I'm sanding them all down. The outside of these drawers were just in fantastic condition. So I'm just sanding the dovetails. You can see there, much better. And now that I have the drawers out, it's an easy time to just go over them one more time. I did them uh, quickly while they were in the dresser, but I like to have them in this direction. So one more quick with the orbital and around all the edges again with my surf prep. Just making sure everything is nice and smooth. I'm going in with white paint, um, which is pretty forgiving, but I just want to make sure that everything's really smooth. So I love the surf prep for these edges, and you can do this by hand with a sanding sponge, absolutely. Uh, it just uh, saves a lot of time to use my surf prep. Just going over everything one more time. And now the fun part get to clean it back up again. I am using crud cutter one last time. So I just want to make sure there's no grease or wax or buildup on this. But right before I paint, I'm going to go in with a damp cloth and just wipe it down one more time to remove any last bits of dust and then get off um, any residue from the crud cutter. I'm going to go ahead now and mark my holes. This is a Craig hardware jig. 
I mark all the holes first. I'm going to drill them all. Um, I'm still using a knob. This one only had one hole, but it was in the wrong spot since that had a drop handle on it. So I'm having, I filled that in with Bondo. I sanded it all down and put new holes in for my knobs that are going in. I also now want to protect these beautiful dovetails now that I've got them all sanded down and pretty. So I'm putting some tape over because I will be painting with the drawers in place. I really like painting with the drawers in. It keeps the inside of the cabinet clean and I, I think it just has an overall better result when they are in this position. Um, I will, I'll show you later when I'm painting, but in between coats I do these details because people always ask, don't the drawers stick? Do you have to go back in and paint? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, no, the drawers don't stick, but I'll show you the details. I'm going to wheel this into my uh, spray tent. My spray tent is a 12 by 12 easy up. It's just a canopy, but I have purchased the sidewalls that go with it. And, and then I put a canvas drop cloth down on the bottom and I have a fantastic 12 by 12 spray tent. I can actually spray three, four, and I have done five pieces in here at a time if I put up all four walls and I just spread them out. So I'm using my Wagner Flexio 5000 and applying a primer. I like to use Styx primer and I do have it tinted. I know it looks white going on here, but I have it tinted. And the reason why I tint it, and I do this with all, all colors, you can see I'm going to be painting this white, but I'm still using tinted primer because I think it really covers the best. Uh, this is a dark finish that I'm covering, and I could go in with just a white primer, but I still feel like using a gray primer and then the white paint uses less paint overall, and I don't have to do so many layers. So I'm making sure, oh, like I'm standing on my head. I'm making sure that I'm getting the underside of all the trim because if you're just painting straight on, first thing when your client comes and picks up their piece and they lay it down in their truck, you can see underneath everywhere was missed when you're spraying. So I stand on my head occasionally. Um, now that everything's primed, you can see these joints just pop out. You can tell that there's a gap there. And even when painted, that doesn't look good. So I do some caulking and I caulked actually around every drawer. That top drawer had six areas, six little things that I had to trim, uh, caulk all the trim all the way around it. But once that's dry, I can go in with my paint. I'm using my favorite paint. This is Farmhouse. Um, it's their Evolution line, which is a fantastic all-in-one. Uh, it's just great hardening properties, but I love how it lays down. And this is in the color Cosmic White. Um, all of my current furniture is already white, so this is going to just go in and match nicely with everything. In between coats and I did do this between the primer coat and the paint as well. I used these sanding pads in a grit of about 320 and I'm sanding in between coats. So it's really important, especially on the top, the way that the um, droplets of paint dry and it's just the overspray, it goes in and it makes all these tiny little bumps everywhere. So if you just knock those down with this really high grit sandpaper or a sponge, it makes a huge difference. So this is in between coats of paint. I am going in and I'm painting all the details on the drawers. So this will be the top and the side. And uh, I like to do it in between coats so that if I get any of this paint that I'm brushing by hand on the front, um, it will change the opacity of it because I'm spraying some and I'm brushing some and they do go on a little bit differently. So I always brush this in between coats and then I go back in and I'll spray my final coat of paint after this which I did do and I forgot to film. And I also did my top coat. This is a General Finishes High Performance Flat Top Coat. It's wet here, I just sprayed it. Um, after the uh, paint and top coat are dry, I went in and taped the inside of the cabinet just to get those fresh, crisp lines. I know they're underneath the drawers, but all the details matter. Here's those beautiful dovetails once again. And these drawers came already sealed and top coated on the outside. I sanded the areas with the um, with the dovetails, but then of course that left the rest of the drawer sealed and the dovetails raw wood. So I decided to go back in with my top coat. Um, I ended up doing two and three coats just so that it was a uniform color and had the same amount, but they turned out fantastic. 
I'm super happy that I did that. A lot of times I just use wax, but this was fun to do it with top coat. And the hardware is going on. I'm doing silver hardware. All of the doors and other uh, furniture that I have in my house have silver. So here we go with some knobs and they are in brushed nickel. I know a lot of people like gold and I love these knobs in gold, but in this particular application, I needed to do them in silver. And I really like these knobs. I don't know why they're just so classic and simple, but they're kind of cool. So let's see how it all turned out. I think it's beautiful. It's, it's still a very large dresser, but crisp and clean. And I think the silver really pops. These drawers are beautiful inside. I added some dividers there. And now it's all ready to go in my room, replacing my old dresser. What do you think? I hope you liked it. Be sure to like and comment and subscribe. Thank you.